This is the StoryWorks Roundtable, where we have conversations about craft. Because becoming a successful author begins with writing a great story. Hello and welcome to this week's StoryWorks Roundtable. Today, Catherine and I are talking about theme. And this will be one of those episodes where we delve into the library So if you go to the episode show notes at storyworkspodcast.com, Catherine will have put together a slider linking this episode to related content. So definitely Mm -hmm. check that out. All right, Catherine, you suggested the topic of theme, so I'm going (laughs) to let you bring us into it. You knew that was coming, right? I did 100%. (laughs) Good. Um, Well, I mean, it's just like fortuitous here that Robert's not here because, you know, Alita and I are the ones of the group that really do mull over our theme, maybe a little more so than Robert does. Not that he doesn't have thematic elements, but that um, we get jazzed about theme. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) theme is something really important (laughs) um, to the way that we craft our stories. So I just thought it would be kind of fun for us to sit and chat about it. But also, I'm at that point in the revision of my short story. And I'm just going to keep talking about the short story that I'm writing because it's what I'm consumed with right now. But um, I hit the end of draft six, something like that. And um, I like typed the last paragraph and went, boom, there's the theme. Like it, you know, that's it. That's what I needed. That's what I need to go back through and revise for theme now. And I think that's the first time I've ever been like, now I need to do a full revision for theme but that's what I needed to do. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. And not that I hadn't thought about the theme beforehand, but I think there's that moment in every story where you nail it and you're like, yes. Okay. That's what the whole story is actually trying to say. So now I need to go back and make sure it's actually saying that all along the way. And that I'm not hitting you over the head with a hammer, but I'm also not saying three things and then trying to make you actually only think one. Um, I want it all to be cohesive and flow together so that you have that same kind of impactful moment that I had when I nailed the theme, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, it was just a really fun moment. And um, yeah, so I wanted to take a second and talk about theme. Cool. Ta-da! Ta-da! Theme. So I make my clients um Mm -hmm. identify their theme yeah right up front and we Mm -hmm. just had a so my fiction coaching group we get together and round table and talk about everybody's projects and I made them identify their themes they were Mm -hmm. they're all at the beginning of novel projects And, you know, it's interesting to see how much they had in mind of their plots Mm -hmm. versus their themes. And in doing the exercise I brought and then talking about it, talking about what they came up with and, you know, having the round table as a, as a sounding board, um, some of the writers thought their theme was one thing, but then realized it was another thing, or they Mm -hmm. maybe came with out a theme in mind, did the exercise said, okay, this is my theme. And then in the discussion went, oh, no, really my theme (laughs) is that. Yes. And when theme is identified, something clicks. Mm -hmm. It's like the pieces sort of all fall together. Yes. And you've got the picture in front of you. Mm -hmm. So, Um, yeah. This is where I usually like to have that picture in front of me before I start writing. But what I've found is that I will write, quote, with a theme in mind and then find that my theme is actually revealing itself to be maybe not entirely different, but slightly different. Or it has moved through the story to where now I have to go back and say, okay, now let's re- you know, move the pieces and fix things that don't work with that so that it aligns better with what the story ended up saying um, Mm -hmm. rather than what I always, you know, think it's going to say. And part of that is just because I'm not the most um, huge of pre-writers, right? (laughs) Like I get a little bit bored of pre-writing and I sometimes just need to jump in so that I can get words on the page so I can figure it out. And theme happens in that way um, a Mm -hmm. lot for me, but yeah, it's amazing how you think you know 
this is the story that I'm going to tell. And then it's just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Actually, this is more important or it's more and more focused or it's more in line with what my character needed to experience or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. And, um, you know, thinking about what you were just saying and kind of writing through your way through the discovery process versus pre-writing and discovering and then starting to draft. Uh, One of the writers in the coaching group is dealing with some very parallel storylines, you know, and so she found, or what I think she's finding through this process, because here I am speaking for another writer, (laughs) (laughs) Um, is that in identifying her theme, she was able to more clearly identify which plot elements need to come forward and which ones, Mm. which storyline is primary and which storyline is secondary. Oh, this is really my plot. And this is really my subplot. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, identifying the theme, which is really about her protagonist's experience, is what let her avoid a lot of writing in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I um, have talked with my short story. I was, we did that whole thing about the narrator, the episode about the narrator and the narrative storyteller and all of these things. Well, when I locked my theme at the end, I realized that some of what I was trying to do with my character wasn't as important because the theme is directly related to the narrative storyteller's readership, right? The people that he's telling the story to and not about my main character so much. And so then I had to pull back take out some of my favorite parts because they didn't they weren't important to the theme, but that's okay because it made the whole story stronger. And I think Sometimes as writers, we're so committed to the one thing that we thought we loved, right? Oh, I wanted this to be, I don't know this writer at all, but I wanted this to be two characters that were always side mm-hmm. by side and and neither of them was more important than the other. But when you lock that theme, you go, nope, okay, the theme is what I want to have the reader go away from the story with, right? That's the feeling, that's the the memory, that's the, you know, the emotion, whatever. Um, so what is it that best serves that? And I think that's a very different perspective sometimes than when we're in the pre-writing mode and we're just like, oh, this cool thing and this cool thing and let's add this cool thing and let's throw this in there. So, Mm -hmm. yes, you know, for me, plot is always in service to theme. Mm -hmm. So plot is what a story is about on the surface. It's the events that happen that can be acted out on a stage But the theme is the intangible human, what the story is really about. And it's the thing the reader walks away Mm -hmm. thinking about and carrying forward into their day. And, you know, there might be some exceptions in certain very plot driven genres or certain beach read type books um, that, you know, have a different focus, have a different sort of story priority. But for me, the the theme takes precedent. And I feel like that's what you were just Mm -hmm. saying in your example of having to take out some things that you really loved about your story in order to make it all gel and align. Yeah. And I think so when I got to the end, like, we'll just be specific. So my, my theme very much was a regret and longing for home. And so when I hit that note and I said, okay, so this is what this story is trying to convey. I went back and said, okay, then I don't necessarily need this little scene that happened between my protagonist. And like, it just didn't serve the same emotional note, the same purpose, the same whatever. And so I was able to say, I can be happy that I wrote it and it was fun and it made me feel, you know, good about whatever, but I, I need to take that out and replace it with something that services that, that feeling of regret and longing, um, and desire for home that I'm really trying to, to make weave through this entire story. So are you ready to take your story craft to the next level? StoryWorks Fiction Online School has courses available 
right now, from micro courses on character traits to master level workshops on plot and building characters. There are also live workshops with your instructor in the classroom with you every week, guiding your progress and workshopping your manuscripts along the way. All students enrolled in StoryWorks Fiction, whether active in a class or not, can take advantage of the monthly free live Q&A calls with Alita. Check out storyworksfiction.com today and take your story craft to the next level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how do we write to a theme like that? And you are talking about a short story, not a novel, so it's much smaller. But, um, you know, we just recorded an episode talking about emotion. And one of the things we don't want to see is the same emotional note (laughs) hit over and over or the same emotion hit in the same way, conveyed in the same way over Mm -hmm. and over. So how do we write to our theme, our one singular theme, and avoid feeling repetitive? I think, again, this is a product of... Um, you have your focus, but you also have, I mean, like it's, it's that triangle shape, right? Like everything funnels down into the theme, but I, it doesn't like the theme itself doesn't have to be in every single sentence. Like, does that make sense? I guess Um, Mm -hmm. where, where you're focusing on the fact that this is the ultimate thing that your reader wants to come away with. Well, a lot of that can happen in movement with your character arc and in movement with your plot and in movement throughout, you know, various things that you're setting up, even your setting can contribute to theme. Like all of it contributes to that, that ultimate goal. Right. But it doesn't have to hammer regret, 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 regret. (laughs) (laughs) Like that would be real one. That would be very dispiriting, (laughs) Um, but it, it, it's more of an overall movement toward, right. Cause Mm -hmm. you want at that climax of your story and the res well, more so the resolution of your story to have that, that thematic impact, right? You've had that climax and now you've settled into your reader understands what hopefully (laughs) you were trying to say, right? And I think for me, books that don't do that very well, I end and I leave them feeling a little bit like, "Mm, Mm -hmm. what did that mean? Um, And a lot of times people who do it really well, even if it's a popcorn book, you can still have very thematic popcorn books, right? Um, where they hit at the end, you know, a family theme or something where you get that feeling of just like, ah, <laughs> you know, and it, it doesn't have to be morose. It doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be, um, yeah, I'm running out of words here, but <laughs> <laughs> it can be positive. It's yeah. All, it can be a positive theme. Absolutely. And I think, um, to some extent you get that kind of angsty writer thing, right. Where everybody thinks they have to make this deep, dark, like re- re- revealing of the soul or something like that, but you can have very positive and uplifting messages, right. Mm-hmm. Themes mm-hmm. throughout your books. And, um, so yeah, d- don't disregard right. it just because you think, oh, well, my book's just fun. Right. Right. No, and I, 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 you know, you, your Sorry, point I, makes me think of um, <laughs> like rom-coms and how mm-hmm. we know how the rom-com is going to end yeah. and we know it's going to be a happy ending. But so you might say, well, the theme of most rom-coms is that love triumphs in the end. Maybe it's yeah. the theme of all rom-coms. Eh, maybe, maybe it's forgiveness. Maybe it's the ability to move past a hurt. You know, maybe it's, you know, there's all sorts of like nuances to that, right? Like sure. your overarching could be love conquers all, but that's kind of cliche. Whereas if you, if you really explore the theme of maybe it's needing to forgive yourself um, mm-hmm. and allow yourself to love. Right. So there's different aspects of that, that we can explore that then they're all reflections of ultimate truth, human reality, truth, whatever you want to say, <laughs> theme, right. Um, right. but that they can give you that at the end where you're, you resonate with that, right? And mm-hmm. you get it out of the story. Mm-hmm. Yes. And everything, everything that happens in your story, everything that happens in that plot has to happen in service to the ultimate theme, mm-hmm. you know? So whether it's funny or sad, whatever, mm-hmm. 
note you're hitting whatever direction it's moving, it's contributing to our ultimate takeaway, which is that love will triumph. Right. You know, it triumphs over class. It triumphs over, um, you know, by class, I mean like social divisions. So Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, triumphs over distance, triumphs over age, whatever separates lovers. Right. Yeah. And so as you're revising your short story, are you finding that that's your, your guidepost is the scene in service to the theme is this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean, like you said, it's a short story, so it's a little bit easier, right. In terms of being able to hold the hole in my head and say, it has to be pretty focused, right. It needs, I only have about five scenes for five. I'm fluctuating. <laughs> I haven't decided if I need that final scene break yet. Um, But anyway, you know, so I I have to kind of give every scene enough of that flavor, right? So it's different than if you're writing a novel Mm -hmm. where you don't want to hit the same emotional note over and over again. I want the reader to have that arc through that emotion. And that's the only emotion I want them to feel. I don't want them to get distracted by other emotions or other things coming in, right? That's the benefit of the short story. It's, it's really just this one little moment, right? One little arc, one little thing. So, which honestly right now I needed (laughs) to be able to focus. Um, But yeah, so yes, is the answer to your question. I am focused on getting that theme in. Um, Really, honestly, a lot of the uh, thematic work for me is coming through voice and making sure that my narrator is really prominent and that his overlay, I guess he's a he. I just always (laughs) hear a male voice. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I hear a male voice. Um, His overlay is distinct in that you're getting his flavor of what is happening so that you get that theme at the end, because what is happening in the story, you know, it's ups and downs, you know, plot arcs and character arcs are, are not necessarily going to give the same flavor that the narrator is, which is why I have that narrator in the first place. That's he's telling the story a specific way in order to get to that theme. He wants the reader to feel that, right? I think that's the difference again, short story versus versus novel right here. Like Mm -hmm. he really wants to drive that home. And so I'm really playing with voice and texture of that voice. And then also um, point of view, having to be really tight with making sure my narrator's point of view is not slipping. Um, mm-hmm. I've mm-hmm. found in like the fourth and fifth scene, this is why I'm not sure they're one scene or two scenes um, that I slipped into the third person of my protagonist and didn't keep enough distance between my narrator and my protagonist. And that kind of <laughs> I read it like, whoa, wait a second, mm-hmm. something changed. Um So making sure that that voice stays consistent really helps with the theme work, at least in this stage Mm -hmm. of the revision. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So do you have thoughts now that you're so focused on the way the theme is working in the short story Mm -hmm. about how theme works similarly or differently when you're working on a novel? Hmm. It's the interview Catherine show. Apparently. (laughs) Well, and you're catching me out on things I haven't thought about, which is kind of fun. Um, I'm going to say yes. I feel like I get the sense of the movement of the story can be different than the point you're trying to make in the theme as long as it continues to serve the theme. I does that I don't know if that makes any sense. So the theme is that top layer, right? And the story goes up and down underneath it, but it's still always contributing to the ultimate theme. So just because love always wins doesn't mean in every scene love is going to win. And, right. and being able to say, okay, but you know, is my narrative exposition, is my voice, is my character's arc, is my plot arc all in service of the theme, then it needs to have those ups and downs, those moments when love's not winning. And clearly it's not okay. 
right? The character is struggling or the, the relationship is struggling. And so therefore you get to see why love needs to win in the end. And that up and down that really allows the reader to agree with you, mm-hmm. right? Because if you don't present the argument, then they're, they're not going to agree with you in the end. Um, right. And I think the novel is just a much longer argument <laughs> <laughs> being made um, for your ultimate theme. And whereas a short story is more just like a, hey, what do you think? And I think the short story is a conversation opener and a novel is more like a full conversation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like the way you just put that. See, when you that. hit me with things I've never thought about, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have time to filter them. <laughs> well, it works. I love it. I'm enjoying this. <laughs> I'm glad you are. I am. No, no. It's all, yeah. I don't know that there's a ton more to say. Um, yeah, it's, if you don't. It's, yeah, theme. Right. right. Yeah, Not everybody it has thinks to be, about it, but mm-hmm. right, and it has to be challenged in order for it to be meaningful at the end. If mm-hmm. everything is just taken for granted and a given, a you don't have a story because there's no dramatic tension and forward mm-hmm. movement. But b the as you said, the argument isn't mm-hmm. won, right? right? So you need to have that challenge to the theme, and I guess even if your theme is a negative one like regret or heartache you need to present that that movement that argument and show that something else is possible in order to fully explore Mm -hmm. your your statement you know Mm -hmm. your thematic statement at the end absolutely Hmm. interesting (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> let's, let's all go examine the themes of our works in progress now. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the StoryWorks Roundtable. Find all our shows, show notes, and videos at storyworkspodcast.com. <laughs>